So I've been designing a lot of transformers lately, and I found out I've got a bit of an advantage. And that is that I am a lot dumber than most people who design transformers. And sometimes that's helpful. <laughs> Hey guys, Tyler here at Alder Audio, and this is video two of my little series on Transformers, where I'm looking at this vintage 1960s Transformer that I've got here in this direct box, and I'm trying to analyze this and see what I can learn to apply to my own modern Transformer wines. And today is like electrical analysis day. We're going to be drawing a model circuit, taking some data on this Transformer and two others, and uh, I have just been super excited to uh, to put out this video. This is kind of the meat and potatoes of the whole project and I have had a lot of fun learning about all of this and I just thought that there would be people out there online that would really enjoy kind of going on the journey with me. So this is kind of the idea and the content that started the whole thing. Now before we get into all of that electrical analysis, uh, one thing I wanted to address up front is actually material science. So there's a whole story online about how the core materials in these old transformers is uh, you know somehow magically related to the sound. So maybe it's some core material we can't get anymore and that that's why these old transformers sound the way they do. Now, I'm, I'm not an electrical engineer. I'm actually a chemist by training, and now I build ribbon microphones. But as somebody who has a pretty deep background in materials science, I do not believe that story. So I'm not going to get deep into it, but uh, if there were alloying elements in the types of materials used for magnetics that had been regulated, something like mercury, then maybe there would be a compelling story for that. But all of the elements that are used to make core materials are all things we're still working with today. Really, it's primarily nickel and iron, but sometimes people see the word molybdenum and that seems kind of mysterious and magical and they kind of assume there's a story there. Molybdenum is something that is used all the time in the modern day. Um, so that's just my take. As a chemist, I think that the most interesting thing about these transformers is more the electricals, which is what we're going to be looking at. So I'm going to get into that side of the story, but to do that, I need my whiteboard, so I'll be right back. Okay, so uh, we're going to get into some measurements here with these six values, but before we get there... I just wanted to say, if you're newer to Transformers, I did film a separate introduction video, which I'll link up here and down in the description. Uh, anybody newer, I'd suggest you go take a look at that one, then come back to this video at this spot. These measurements might make a little bit more sense to you. Also, at the beginning, I made this joke that I have an advantage because I am dumber than most people who design transformers. And as much as I'm joking about that, I'm a little bit serious. I, I'm not an electrical engineer. I come to this from a totally different perspective and it's kind of far more basic and fundamental. So if I would make like an analogy to cars, uh, you know, the data you find on a transformer company's website is complex and deep and kind of like, you know, analyzing the, the zero to 60 time of a car or the torque and horsepower, kind of complex measurements. What I'm measuring here is far more fundamental and it's where those things come from. It'd be like measuring the bore size of a cylinder or the size of an air intake. And uh, it doesn't tell you the full story, but I think sometimes, at least for me, it's a kind of a more helpful way to get into things, easier to understand and uh, sometimes can bring up some different conclusions, which we're, we'll get into later. So uh, that's what we're going to get into, these six fundamental measurements, and in order to talk about them, I'm gonna draw a little model circuit. Now, the reason that we even need a model circuit is to kind of capture as best as we can, sort of all the intricacies of how a real transformer works. An idealized transformer would just be two inductors on the same core, that's all you have to represent. But in the real world, there are resistances and capacitances and leakages that happen that we try to draw a circuit for and then, you know, represent as discrete components. So I'm gonna draw a model circuit here. It's not the only model circuit that exists, it's just the one that I thought was kind of the most fitting for this video and to not get too long here and uh, then we're going to use that circuit to describe what each of these measurements are so let me get the circuit down here all 
All right, so we've got our model circuit here, and I'd just like to say this is sort of like the weediest part of the video. So if all of this doesn't make sense to you, stick with me. You're still going to get to the same conclusions in the end. But I do want to go over where all of this stuff I'm going to be measuring comes from in this circuit. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is the inductance. Uh, inductance is like the primary measurement of a transformer. The primary side has a inductance at the secondary side, and you often don't see it published. You know, sometimes you see impedance instead, which is a little bit more like a recommendation of where to use the transformer rather than an aspect of the transformer. So it's kind of confusing when you see this transformer is 60,000 ohms impedance, and that, that is not a measurement of the transformer. That's saying you should use it with a 60,000 ohm source or something like that. Uh, so if you want, but if you want to get into the more fundamental stuff, inductance is the uh, measurement that you're interested in, and I've represented that in this kind of funky way with this model. So you see that you have the, the kind of heart of the transformer here, but then you have this inductance up here, and this is the leakage inductance. So it's the all the stuff that doesn't make it from the primary to the secondary. It leaks out, and we can measure that, and uh, it matters. So um, it's called L sub L. And that is going to be one of our measurements, the leakage inductance on the primary. The other thing we're going to be measuring is just the primary inductance. So that's going to be both of these uh, together, which is L1 right here. And then L1 also has an aspect of it that we can evaluate called the Q factor. The Q factor, I'll say the quickest way I can describe Q factor is that if it was a perfect inductor, the Q factor would be 100. And if it was a perfect resistor, the Q factor would be zero. So the Q factor is a measurement that kind of tells you how much your inductor is acting more like an ideal inductor versus kind of a more complex circuit in series with a resistor. And there's all kinds of more stuff you can read about that online. But for now, I'm just going to kind of throw it out there and we're going to be taking that measurement, the Q factor. Now, these three on the bottom are kind of parasitic things that happen. So the first one is the distributed capacitance CD, and that's represented right here. That's the capacitance that builds up on the windings on the, just the primary side. Okay, so we get a capacitance that we can measure there, but we also get a capacitance that builds up between the primary and the secondary. So we put another one down here, CD and CM. Both of those are incredibly important values for how the transformer performs. And the last bit is that we always got to recognize resistance, which I've represented right here. You can get into more the resistive effects in AC, but we're not going to get that deep. We're just going to use DC resistance. It's not going to tell us a lot. It's probably the least interesting measurement, but we are going to include it in the list. Now there's all kinds of stuff we could add here. There's capacitance to ground. There's more stuff to happen on the secondary, but I think that these six measurements are kind of like our best bang for the buck to analyze these three transformers. So uh, I'm gonna be doing that, taking measurements on those three, and then we're gonna come back and compare them. All right, so let's measure some stuff. All right, so I have emerged from my laboratory activities. You know, you know these are absolutely unnecessary, but they, they do make you feel like a scientist, uh, which is not what we're doing today. This is not science because this is one specimen measurement of each of the three of these transformers, but I still think it's going to bring us to some rather interesting conclusions. So I've got them all on the board back here. Got three columns. Now these are the transformers that we shot out in the first video. So B is for what I called in the first video the budget transformer. S is what I call the industry standard transformer. That's like up in the reputation of kind of the best transformers that you can get for a direct box these days. And then uh, here we have the A9J. That's our vintage transformer from the 60s. And uh, I'll tell you what, we've got a pretty complicated story going on here. I think it's pretty interesting and I'm going to try to walk us through it in a way that kind of simplifies it and makes it as clear as I possibly can. All right, so let's start at the top here with our inductances. So the inductance on the budget transformer was 230 Henrys. And, uh, you know, that's pretty huge. Just for reference, a typical guitar pickup might be in the range of like two to three Henrys. And so even this budget transformer has the inductance of maybe about 100 guitar pickups wired in series. 
And, uh, you know, it, that's a total apples and oranges sort of comparison, but it just gives you like a reference of the degree of high inductance that we're talking about with these transformers. Um, it does not have the same number of lines as 100 guitar pickups. The core of the transformer has a big role to play in driving the inductance up like that. But I just, you know, it's an interesting reference. Okay, 230 Henry. Now, what is our industry standard transformer have? 1,800 Henry. That is bonkers level inductance. It's when I measured this, it was the highest inductance that I've ever, you know, seen pop up on my meter. Now the A9J is 1,430 Henry. So, you know, from, from the looks of it at the start, you know, you have that industry standard transformer as the highest inductance. Now uh, we're going to get into that a little bit later in terms of why you would want a high inductance but let's kind of go over the rest of the numbers first the second thing here is um leakage inductance so the leakage inductance on our budget transformer is 0 0.1 henry this is the lowest of the three it's um pretty much negligible so that means that you've got a mutual inductance of pretty much the the 230 henry in the transformer now this industry standard transformer this one really threw me the measurement here was 970 Henry of leakage inductance. Now, um, I put an asterisk here because I'm not sure I trust this measurement. It's, it's so high, and the story here is definitely a complicated one. This leakage inductance behaves a little bit differently than the other two, and it varies a lot with frequency. So all of the measurements here, uh, most of them were taking, taken on an LCR meter, everything but the uh, distributed capacitance. And you can select a measurement frequency, and it's very important for, especially in the inductance, to keep it low. So I did these all at 100 hertz. So this is 970 Henrys of leakage at 100 hertz. And if you go up, it starts to go away. So by the time you get up to 10K, you've got less than one Henry of leakage. But where you want the high inductance is in the low end. So it's just kind of like this whole complicated story of leakage. And uh, if, if y'all have comments on that, I know there's a lot of smart people out there. I just think uh, that's kind of interesting. Let me know your thoughts on that huge leakage inductance with the, uh, the industry standard transformer there. Now the A9J, half a Henry. Half a Henry of leakage, which, you know, again, is pretty much negligible um, compared to the 1430 Henrys of uh, inductance. So kind of a confusing story here on the inductance. The industry standard has the highest number, but once you remove the leakage inductance, if this is real, then uh, the A9J actually has the higher inductance that's, that's actually mutual. It's um, the inductance that is actually coupled to the secondary. Okay, little, little complicated story there. So now let's move on to the Q factor. Budget transformer has a Q factor of 1.5. Industry standard is at 1.6, and the A9J is 2.0. Now, I'm not going to get deep into that right now, but I just think it's interesting to collect the data. So moving on to CD, the distributed capacitance. This is probably the hardest one to measure. I do this on an oscilloscope with a measurement of phase and then a calculation. And uh, the budget transformer was 50 picofarads. The industry standard was 26 picofarads. And then the A9J was 41 picofarad. Moving on to the mutual capacitance. These are incredibly low. The budget is at 3 picofarads. Super low. The industry standard was so low, it was like beyond the measurement of my meter. It was, you know, bouncing around between 0 and other numbers. So I'm just putting that at less than 1 picofarad. It, it has a ridiculously low uh, mutual uh, capacitance basically below what I can detect with my equipment and then the A9J has a mutual capacitance of seven picofarads all right so these are all very low capacitances for reference the typical guitar cable might be somewhere in the range of about 300 picofarads so these are all very very small measurements here the last thing on the list probably also the least important is the DC resistance and uh, it's 230 for the budget transformer 3,800 for the industry standard and 4,200 for the A9J. So what is sort of the full story 
that all of these numbers are telling us. Well, the first thing I'd like to speak to is the budget transformer. You can see from these numbers that the budget transformer is constructed with sort of a just good enough mentality. It's definitely not shooting for anything high end. And you can see that with the much lower inductance. That's probably the biggest factor. But you also see the lowest quality factor, the highest distributed capacitance. And then with the resistance being lower, we pretty much know in this situation, along with the inductance, that the budget transformer has significantly less wire on it, so less wraps. And uh, that's all I'm really going to say on that one. Really, the bigger story here is trying to look at the difference between the industry standard and the A9J. When I look in the center column at the S transformer here, what I see is very clearly a transformer designed for low capacitance. So it won on both of the capacitance measurements, but at the expense of a significant amount of leakage inductance. And that whole story sort of makes sense. It's consistent with itself. The things you would do to build a transformer uh, in order to get low capacitance, those same things give you leakage. Okay, so it's kind of consistent with itself, this whole story here. And those low capacitances are very beneficial. There's all kinds of articles online about why that's the case. It helps with common mode rejection and all of that. I think that it helps with a, a signal that sounds really kind of clean. It gives a clean impression. And I do think when I listen back to the shootout from the first video, that I can kind of pick up on that clean factor on, on that transformer. Now, in comparison, what the A9J has going for it is still a rather healthy primary inductance, but low leakage. So once you subtract off the leakage, uh, from the primary, the A9J has the higher useful mutually coupled inductance, but it's at the cost of higher capacitance. Now, so that's kind of the, the trade-off, all right? So would you rather have low capacitance with the uh, S-transformer or higher inductance with the A9J? Now, I've done tons of analysis on this and read up on it and tried to look for, you know, all kinds of things to explain what I hear versus the numbers. And uh, on first impression, what I have to say is that if I had to pick something on numbers alone, I think I would have picked the industry standard transformer because those low capacitances are kind of well regarded in the industry as beneficial. And the other thing is that I can't find anything that uh, shows that, a, that an inductance higher than 800 Henry is beneficial. As far as I can tell, what the theory bears out is that you shouldn't really be getting much going, going higher than that. It's very much diminishing returns in terms of sound. And yet, as I said at the beginning, I have an advantage because I am dumber than the people who design transformers. And sometimes what you need is somebody who doesn't quite know what they're talking about coming into a place and asking different questions that aren't biased by knowing a lot of stuff. So I came into this whole thing with my ears listening to these different transformers and I found that I consistently preferred the A9J. And I'm on a mission to try to explain my preference for that transformer. And after all of this data and other measurements that I've taken that I didn't think were worth the time of this video, the best thing that I can seem to correlate that to is this high inductance with low leakage. Now, I don't have any like, you know, scientific explanation on why that would lead to the sound, but it's just the best thing that I can correlate. So that's my hypothesis, that the thing driving the sound is the high inductance. Now, oddly enough, Enough, I'm in the position to test that hypothesis because I make transformers. So this is my plan for the next video. I want to shoot out the A9J next to maybe three or four of my own transformers walking up the inductance. And if my hypothesis is correct, we'll hear the sound change as we go through those transformers and we'll be able to bear out that the higher inductance sounds more like the A9J. And I think that's going to be a good time. I have not wound them yet. I have not listened to them yet. I don't know how it's going to turn out. So, you know, maybe I'll show up and I'll do that video and I'll just say I was wrong. You know, who knows? But the whole point of this was to bring you all on the journey with me and have a good time. I know I've been having a good time. So, uh, so yeah, we'll see where that goes. In the meantime, if you have a question, a comment, if you have information to share, like I said, I, uh, I did not know everything about this field. Uh, you know, hit me up in the comments. Otherwise, keep an eye on the channel for that next video with, uh, with my transformers that'll go next to the A9J. And uh, yeah, other than that, thank you for watching and uh, talking about a bunch of nerdy transformer numbers with me. I appreciate it. I'm Tyler at Alder Audio, and 
I hope you make some music today.